right, hey, I'm back. I'm in Letters to Live By again. This was from Mardell's. Um, yeah, I can't even show you the UPC off the bottom. It's, it's way down here. It's all torn up. But anyway, um, I think it's still a current book, but they had a good sale going on, so I grabbed it. And today, we're going to be working on how to get the letter from this to this look right here. So I'm going to slide this up. Can I get the whole letter in? Almost. So we're going to start over here. When you start with the page, it's like this. Okay? Now, I am just going to take this polychromo, the Delft Blue. In fact, this is the same color I was using in that last video. Um, if you missed it, I was showing how to do the lettering, how to go from a medium to dark and to light. So this time, let's work here. So when I start with this, the thought process is I would like a nice purpley blue because it's opposite of this orangey yellow on the color wheel. And it's really going to help the colors to pop. So I'm going to come in here and semi-carefully. Is, is that such a thing? I'm going to come in here and just start doing all around these little circles. Because I'll come back in with maybe even gold gel pen and do that. Okay, so just coming around here, getting that in there nice and solid. And you're going to go around every little thing. Yeah, it's going to take some time. So in the interest of you not just watching me color, I have already done the next section. All right. So here then, I've gone ahead and decided that I'm going to go around these items. I could have just gone straight and ignored this, but I want to act like these are throwing a shadow down underneath. So coming around, and then the next step is to start coloring this in lightly. Now, I... If I were not doing this for video, I would do all of this outline stuff in one sitting, and then all of this in one sitting. The reason being, once you've got that pressure of how much color you're applying, you want to go ahead and do the whole thing so that it's going to turn out the same. Because if you start and stop, like the next time I come, I might be like, that much pressure. Well, that doesn't look the same as this. So it's best to go ahead and get that whole thing done all at one time so that you know that the pressure you applied was the same. Now in this step, I'm also going to be blending this line out. From See how there's a line here? So as I'm coming through here, I'm going to be blending this out, meaning that I'm going to have to color just a little bit harder, little more pressure as I get to these edges so that I can make them go away. All right. And again, on the duck, I just went around his little flapper foot there. And so then the next section it would all look like this. Now I'm going to come in with my white and I'm going to start blending. I know I didn't go to a lighter color, I actually went to white. And I'm not real sharp tip on this because I don't want to gouge down into the paper. I really want to be able to put that pressure on there and mix that mix that white in. Now I can do this because these are an oil base pencil. So they really blend nicely. 
But see, I can just keep going over and over. I can go in here a little bit if I want to. I can just keep going over this. And again, if you did all that other blue in one setting or whatever your middle color is, then this is going to all look more uniform and not like it was done two or three different times. And then I would come around here, still going the direction of the letter. Okay, so I'm going to be going long ways to the letter as I come around here. It's just going to make it look more fluid because the strokes in here, this um, the way it's kind of striped looking doesn't bother me. That's like an added texture, added depth. So I'm just going to keep going the direction of the letter that I'm working on. So if you were doing a pair of blue jeans, you'd go up and down like the grain of the jeans. If you were doing a flower, I would do the shape of that petal. Does that make sense? So now I am going to bring one more pencil in on our trip around here. Let me just go ahead and get some more of this done because I want to show you something up here at the other end. And see, because I did all of this in one sitting, this is all fairly uniform. It's a little bit darker over here. And it's because I did that at a different time. So one thing I'm going to do when I finish this letter up is as I come up this side and go back up to the top, I'm going to make sure I end up going just a little bit darker again so that the whole thing ends up looking fairly uniform. Okay. Almost to the point where I want to show you the next color. I am going to add indigo. Yes, it was also a color that we used in the last coloring. I'm using right now just a basic white same brand pencil, yeah, it's still a Polychromo by Faber-Castell. Okay, now I'm coming on over here. And this will wear your hand out. So if you sleep in um, braces or anything, you may have to sleep in braces if you do this all in one sitting. My hand right now, right through here, just throbs. <laughs> It's because I've got such a grip on this pencil, but it's how I'm able to blend it. Now, I won't go all the way into this because this is showing me how dark to make that. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and make this a little darker now. I can. See, this is not full of color yet. There's still a lot of white on that paper. So this is that blue or that um, the Delft blue that I started with. So I can go back and add more of that and see how it's still blending in and it did deepen it up some. So that's good. As long as there's little white divots in your paper, you can keep adding color. Now what I wanted to show you, goodness. Um, this is the dark indigo again, 157. Yeah, that Delft blue was 141. I'm going to come in with this color. Do you see how right up here it's really dark in that corner? I'm going to anchor this letter a little bit by adding this just down here at this corner area. See, I didn't do a lot just in that corner. Now see how that's darker? If I want it to look heavier on the bottom, then I can take and also run a row of this just right here. Do you see how that letter looks heavier now at the bottom? The other place I would add this is right back in here 
make sure I've got a good point on it. Then when I come over these leaves later with green, and I'm probably going to use like some sort of a yellow green, a fresh foliage um, type green, something really light and airy, then it's really going to pop these leaves up because everything under it is so dark. Okay, again, blend it out, get lighter as you go out, so it's not just a stark dark with a line. Okay, whoops, I went into that leaf. I'll have to do some erasing in here. These are little bitty areas. So then there's that. Then I would come up and do the same thing here. But I really need to get this a little more solid first. So really take a look at what you're doing. Um, a good rule of, thumb, rule of thumb, you know, I'm a painter first, colorist second. So something I do sometimes is just walk away from it walk away, come back and look, and see what looks like it needs to be touched up, you know? And normally I would do this second. I would go around the outsides first, but I want to get it the same as this. And because I'm fixing to move on and color that, I want to make sure it's over here so I know what degree of darkness to put in there. Now I can go ahead and color this and know that it's going to blend. And see, just blend into the edge of that. Then take my dark and come in here and do the darks. Then when I put some yellow around this border, and maybe some gold or something on the dots, it's really gonna pop. And the dragonflies, I'm probably gonna do them in teal. I may even come back and do those on a video for you. Would you like that? See how I do my dragonflies? So there's that. Okay, but you can see the difference in this side and that side. How this really looks like a shadow and like the dragonflies really popped up. Okay, so a lot of times it is in your color choices and what you're doing. Um, don't get in a big hurry. Take your time. Um, I will speak just for a minute, different subject here. Pencils. We're going to be taking a cruise in September and where it's not as hot as June and July in Texas, and we're headed to Key West and Nassau. It will still be warm enough out that it will melt colored pencils. So I am going to go back to the basics and take my Crayola pencils with me on the trip. I don't know that I'll be doing any videos for coloring while we're gone but it is like an eight day trip, so who knows. But um, just when you're taking your supplies with you, try to think about what the weather's gonna be like and where you're gonna be. If, and I won't take, like, I won't take one of my Fabiana books, the fairy tales, because if something happens to the book, I might be a little upset, even though it's just a coloring book because I do have all of her books. But, um, so when you're, when you're, you know, globe trotting and doing your trips and stuff, think about the supplies, think about the weather, where you're gonna be, what can you afford to lose if you had to lose something, you know? I don't wanna lose my Faber-Castells or have them stolen so I'm most definitely not taking them with me. Plus with them being oil, and especially with your high wax content pencils, 
you don't want all that melting. So um, again, just stop and think about that before you take them on a trip. Even if you're taking a trip in the car and you're like, well, I'm just gonna leave them in the car. There's no way anybody's gonna steal them. Yeah, that might be true, but how hot is it going to get in your closed up car? Will it, are you gonna be somewhere where it's gonna be warm enough that it can really melt them and affect the lead down inside the barrels? Because they do melt, y'all. Pencils will melt just like your crayons will. So, but the Crayola, I can get the largest set for, gosh, I think I can even go to Crayola and get them for like 14 bucks or less. So that's not a huge investment if something happens to those. Does that make sense? So stop and think before you travel with your supplies. And, um take a pencil sharpener and a little Ziploc so that you're able to empty the shavings and not have to keep your sharpener so full that it gets clogged. All right, here we go. So I actually had not planned on completely finishing this on camera. And it still needs a lot of touch-up. Like I said, I need to come in with the eraser and really clean up around the dots. Need to get those really cleaned up. Get them white again. Or depending on what color gel pen I use, eh, it may just cover it. I'm thinking right now about a gold gel pen for all the dots because I want to do the outside in a yellow. I may actually do the outside and the dots in gold gel pen because, well, I was thinking I would do, you know, the technique where I do the yellows and the tan and the brown so that it looks like gold. But if I do that, that's an awful skinny area. So it may be actually better to um, use a gel pen on that. Okay, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Let me stand up and look through the camera. Yeah, it's not too shabby. It needs work though. And see, that's another thing. I didn't notice this right here until I got up and looked through the camera. And then I'm noticing, yeah, that's really a big glob going on. And I may just need to go in and add some more of the Delft Blue over it. And then go to it again. So I'll keep tweaking and working with this. And hopefully it'll look better the next time I come back on and we work on the, um, I don't know. I guess the dragonfly, if y'all want to see that, let me know. So leave me messages down below. My Patreon, it's um, Pam Proctor um, over on Patreon.com. It's still up. There is new, no new material. I repeat, no new material. But if you want to donate to the cause or see what's already up, you're welcome to join and you can go through what's on there. I have some people that are just there just to keep donating to me being able to get supplies and to renew my um, stock of pencils from time to time. If there's something that you would like to see reviewed, let me know and I'll see if I can review it without you having to buy a whole bunch of whatever it is. It's gonna depend on how much it costs and how much is being donated over there but I'm not opposed to it. Okay, so that's going to be it for now. Hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to not be gone for quite so long of a time next time. All right, bye.